So good morning, everyone. As we have Youth Sunday, there could not be a better Sunday for us to be talking about the value of family. But prior to that in the Gospel, they lay out a story of Jesus being a person who was crazy. So before we get into how this all happened, or before we begin talking about family, let's try and figure out why Jesus was considered to be crazy or becoming unhinged. A part of that is a journey. So we're going to start the journey from the back of the congregation. Before we begin to talk about how Jesus' parents and our Jesus' mother and brothers came to greet him, you have to understand that he was on a journey. And this journey was always by foot or perhaps even a mule. The question is, why would people who know Jesus believe that he was going crazy? Well, I can tell you that having gone on many family trips, <laughs> trips that are probably about six and a half hours to eight hours away, many of you probably can, can think back to when you were on a trip and you've had a wonderful vacation, you've spent lots of time together, and no matter how you end a vacation, you typically end up in a small car with everybody who, quite frankly, are looking for a break from one another. <laughs> so I, I was thinking about it, and you know, Jesus is on this journey, heading back to his home. And I just kept thinking, usually it's about that last hour. You're about one hour from your doorstep, and the moment hits. There's nothing that's going to stop me from getting to the front door. We're not stopping the vehicle. We're not getting snacks. We're not going to stop for gas. We're not stopping if somebody needs to use the bathroom. We are just going to get home. Because at that point, you're tired. Some might call you cranky. That's also typically when parents pull out the silent game, <laughs> right? First one to make a noise, loses. Well, that works for about 20 seconds, and then we're back to trying to figure out how we are going to survive one another getting home. So imagine this, Jesus, no vehicle, is working his way home. And with him are people who are following him. People that are believing that he is the Messiah. So he's on his way to a hometown where prior to becoming somebody of importance, he was seen as that carpenter. So he's coming back to a hometown where some of the houses he helped build. Some of the furniture in those houses, he helped create. So all of the people within this town, in his hometown, know him as a carpenter. Now, this could help us reference why people started to think that he was a little on the crazy side. Figuring he's very tired. They probably have not stopped for food. So he's ending a voyage to an area where people believe him to be that carpenter. Even though, through word of mouth, they're being told he's not that. Okay? He's, he's the Messiah. So people within that town go, wow. He's got to be coming, becoming crazy if he believes that he is, is that. So... That coupled with his continued journey into town, 
he's met immediately by a crowd of people. So instead of going directly to the front door and starting to unwind, he's met by a crowd of people. And his immediate, his immediate need was to share with them some more stories, some parables. And at this time, word was starting to get around and perhaps um, the gossip mill was in full force. And word got to his mother that he's, he's losing. So he would, the scribes would tell people, hey, this, this guy's gonna need some help. He, he's getting to be a little on the strange side. Uh, and Jesus, when he arrived and started talking to these people, were starting to make references. They said that he had a devil, or Satan. Well, his response was, well, I'm going around releasing demons, so why would I, if I had a demon inside me, why would I want to release the demon? If a demon is releasing demons, then that particular concept is now broken. It doesn't make sense. And so he provides a couple of more examples to try to get the crowd to believe you're not making sense. Well, the great thing is we all have family. Family that are there to support us, family that are there during the hardest times of life. Even when you're stressed out, there's a family member there who can bring you back. So that's what Jesus' mother and brothers are saying. They, they caught the wind. They caught the story, the buzz around town. Let's go and get him. Let's go take him home. I would guess it was probably to give him, give him some time and space, some time to be alone. Uh, but perhaps also they might have been looking to assess how he really was doing because remember, they hadn't been with him. <clears throat> so, a crowd is around Jesus. It gets to a point where Jesus' mother Mary and his brothers come to get him. But they're not even able to get near him. Not even able to get in the same room. So you can imagine, just like many parents will do, uh, they... Start shouting, Jesus, come on, let's go home. It's not that easy because they can't hear. So the word gets passed along till one person inside the room says to Jesus, your mother and brothers are outside. Now, typically, I think the crowd would have been expecting, oh, he's had the whole thing. But instead, he turns it on to them and says, but my brothers and sisters and mother are all right here with me. And that's the point. The point of the story is that, brothers and sisters, we are a family. It gets even better. Because at some point in your lives, many of you have gone to the baptismal box here or in another church and at that moment your parents and the church decide that you are to become a child of God somebody who is now going to seek the help of an entire congregation to help guide them through their life It goes even further than this. Because as we sit in this, in this in this sanctuary as a congregation, and we hear Pastor Paul putting together a great children's sermon about the extended family that we have here at Emmanuel, we have to think critically. Even though we're not blood-related, we can rely on one another. We can make sure that if there's a hard time, that we have individuals to fall back on. This congregation 
does what families do. When someone is in need, they help. When somebody is not able to make a meal for themselves, a meal is brought to them. That's, that's what family does. It's important to know that the journeys that one takes can lead you to become tired, sometimes frustrated. Maybe at times you might appear a little crazy. That's the time when you need family the most. That's the time where we as a congregation can show the strength of true family. And we get to come here every Sunday and see it every single week. How incredibly amazing that is. So let's see how this works. If you have been baptized, I invite you to stay here. Look around, brothers and sisters. Your family is now standing. If you have experienced in this congregation one act that makes you feel like you are a part of this extended family, I'm going to ask you to think about that for a second. But when I say and ask you again, have you felt a part of the family? I want you to shout amen. Okay? So think about a time where brothers and sisters from our community, from this church, have been there to support you. Okay, ready? Have you felt supported by the Emmanuel family? Amen. amen. Let's try that again, because we did ask you to scream. <laughs> Have you felt supported by your Emmanuel family? Amen! See, Pastor, look. I got them on their feet and screaming <laughs> amen. So there's one thing left to say, brothers and sisters of my family and yours. Be there for one another. When you hear each other call for you, be there. Amen.